Hello, my friends, and welcome. I'm Sachin, and with me today, I have Dr. Marisol Tierro. We are colleagues, friends, you know, we belong to similar masterminds and mentorships, and we recently bumped into each other and had a conversation that literally transformed my life uh, for the second time. So Marisol has been uh, influential in my life, particularly my wife's life, uh, because of uh, her castoral. We're going to definitely talk about that. But a conversation that uh, recently occurred in November at Mindshare uh, totally transformed my life. And uh, actually, it was in October uh, because since then, I've never looked at my clothing the same way. And it's been a totally eye opening experience for me to look at labels on the clothing that I wear. And it's, you know, you know, forced me in many ways now, because once you know better, you do better. It's forced me to really upgrade uh, the way I dress myself. And at 44, I'm shocked. Nobody had told me about this before or was outside of my awareness, but I am forever uh, and eternally grateful for you, Marisol. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Dr. Sachin. I'm so excited to share this because I, like you, also had a revelation one day and was shocked because I, I couldn't realize how, with all the knowledge and education that you and I have and other practitioners and uh, people all over the world, so educated we are, and we're constantly looking at labels of our foods and looking at different labels, but the thing that we wear every day and put next to our skin, which is, you know, the, the, what, what envelops our, our temple, this, we don't pay attention to the labels. And, and what it comes down to is, as you said, like Maya Angelou, like once you know better, you do better. We just haven't been exposed to the knowledge of what the fabrics in our lives and what they are made out of and how they are impacting us. And it's, it's an important message to share. Yeah, and it's a pretty deep rabbit hole when you start going down it. I mean, you, you, the results and the conclusions are always quite simple um, in terms of what fabrics to choose because uh, in terms of what you can use for clothing, the, the number the number of fabrics and the choices that you have are somewhat narrow in a good way, right? So it's not like you've got hundreds of different things to choose from or, or different materials to choose from. Once you know what you're looking for, it's pretty easy to spot out uh, the right clothing. Uh, for me, yeah. you know... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, it, it's absolutely it, it. What's really, really interesting is we don't know this because we've been exposed since the industrialization area to like hundreds of millions per year, tons of plastics that are making our clothing. Imagine that number, hundreds of millions of tons every single year making our clothing that we wear. And so it, 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 this, this goes far beyond the conversation of even like eco-friendly, et cetera. Like this is far around. This is about what is, what is good for our health and good for our bodies that we wear on our skin every single day. Right. And for you, mm -hmm. what was your experience? You found, you found that you had to shift everything from, plastic materials that you did not know that might have like felt good on your skin and maybe were wrinkle free. I think those are the things that we're looking for modern day convenience, right? Wrinkle free, stain free, all of these things, there's been added chemicals to our materials. Sometimes these materials are cotton. Sometimes they may be wool. However, and that's another whole aspect of the material conversation. But just if we break it down to the most simplest of forms of how can we choose and select better fabrics and better clothing that will suit our lives better, we have to start at the one place, which is, is the materials that we can use. And yes, they are limited to wool. We've got wool, we've got cotton, and we've got linen. And so if we want to go based on a completely natural material, oh, and also silk. So those are the four, the four that we have. We've got wool, linen, cotton, and silk. And ideally, but we're not going to even get into the picky side of being organic. Ideally, it's organic as well, too. But right now, I believe the conversation just needs to start with let's get natural materials on our on our bodies first. And then we can evolve to working it into becoming organic and higher quality as we move and grow in the journey of, of knowing better and doing better honestly. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a great point because we have to like really start where we are because it can get, it can seem overwhelming, right? It's like opening up your pantry or your refrigerator and learning about nutrition for the first time. And you're like, what am I going to do with all this food? And, and it can seem very overwhelming to try to make a complete overhaul. So what I, what I did and what I suggest that people consider doing is maybe you start replacing your base layers, right? So the garments that are touching your skin, um, you know, like your undershirts, your underwear, your leggings, um, you know, your internal base layers that you'd be wearing, 
you know, make those so that, or replace those so that they're natural materials. And then the outer layers, you can keep wearing until you, it's ready for you to upgrade. But the problem is what's interesting about synthetic clothing is it never degrades, right? So it, the shirt looks the same, no matter how many times you wash it, no matter how many times you wear it. And it looks the same as the day you bought it, right? So yeah. it's kind of a great thing in terms of durability, but also it, um, you're, you're never really recycle. You're never really going through those clothes. You're never really wearing through them. So they never actually, actually develop any character either. Right. Which were, which were, which is also important. Right. So here's an interesting thing. I went on a portaging trip and my buddy's like, bring your favorite wool sweater. And even if you get a burn hole in it, it'll be a memory that lasts forever. Right. And, and, and so, and so like our clothes, you know, character in our clothing is, uh, is also important for us to consider as well, because there's a story that goes along with some of the scars that our favorite jackets bring with them or sweatshirts or whatnot. I love that. It's, it's so true. I have like my, my favorite pair of cowboy boots, which also is something you got to wash how you purchase those too. But my favorite pair is the ones I had when I was 15 years old and they're raggedy and replace the sole, but they're just, they're a great pair of boots. And I travel with them everywhere to this day. And it's just, it has character. It has life. It's like the wrinkles on our face as well too. But you know, I want to really bring to attention because I love what you said about starting with your undergarments. Cause for me, that's where it began. Um, I was recently before you and I had that conversation and you know, I've, I've been in the textile industry because of the work that I do with castor oil packs. So I've always had an awareness that obviously castor oil packs, which is a health treatment, are done with cotton and a flannel wool, right? So I was always aware that those are the two best. And I was hesitant back when I very, very first did my very first castor oil pack, which is over a decade ago when I was in naturopathic college. I remember at the time organic bamboo uh, flannel was starting to kind of become a thing or sheets. It was like, oh, this is a cool eco-friendly alternative. But at the time I was working for various associations, um, eco-friendly associations in, in Toronto, uh, you know, volunteering my time. And I started to, I became, I became aware back then about the, the difference between eco-friendly doesn't really necessarily mean health friendly. And mm. this is a huge subject in our world and in marketing and in business and on all the different products that we purchase, because there's a well-known marketing tactic known as greenwashing, where they'll use uh, words such as natural or or, or, or even the colors green and you look at it and right away it sends you a message that you think this is going to be more natural it's going to be healthier but it might not necessarily be the case right like it like I think you were sharing a story about wool socks right do you want to share that story because I think that that is perfect like they'll say something but you got to look a little bit deeper beyond just the label yeah absolutely right. so you know you know, clothing, clothing like food has to have labels on it, right? The materials, that's a, a standard part of, um, you know, the process. So when you look, I was at the store yesterday and looking for wool socks because winter is coming here in Toronto. And, yeah. and so I saw a pair, it said wool crew socks, looked at the back, read the label and only 2% was wool. And, you know, companies get away with this. So the unsuspecting buyer might think they're wearing wool socks and what they're really wearing is polyester. What they're really wearing is, you know, basically, um, you know, oil-based uh, compounds on their feet. That's exactly it. And that's the thing is that the laws for the percentages of the amount that you can claim on, unless you say 100% wool, right? It says 100% wool or 100% cotton, then that's good. That's good legal labeling. But otherwise, I believe the percentages, you only need to have 2% of it. And that's how that company was able to just basically say it's a wool sock. But I mean, mm. that is confusing to the consumer and then how do we know any better unless i mean look at you and i like we're medically trained like we know all the ins and outs of foods and labels and different aspects of the world but we never thought about our clothing and you know one of the things that i look at in my life the biggest impactor and this is where i started because i'm i'm a big fan of hot yoga i love hot yoga it's one of my favorite practices i always feel so in tune and so wonderful and one of the big reasons i love it is because i'm my area of focus in in health and my wellness practices is a lot about detoxification and cleansing and drainage and always optimizing those functions in my body and so hot yoga, I find, is just such a wonderful vehicle for that. And plus, as well, you know, helping you to, to, to open up to soul and spirit, right? So it's just kind of the all-in-one for, for, for wellness, mm. in my opinion. 
And I practice it so regularly. I mean, I have an entire drawer full, 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 like chock full of all of these yoga clothing. And when I was on going on my trip, I was, I was starting the process of learning about materials. And here I go and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be doing hot yoga. I'm going to be, you know, outside in the heat. I'm going to really, this time, I'm going to look at my clothing and only bring what I have that is, you know, it has to have like at least cotton in it. That was my rule at the beginning. Cause I was like, at mm. least have some cotton in it. Cause I wasn't sure. Right. I, I, I did have the high hopes. Like I was like hundred percent cotton. Let's see if I can only use a hundred percent cotton. <laughs> As I went through the drawer that, that dream quickly, you know, disappeared and dissipated into the, <laughs> into the atmosphere, into like literally gas because I, I was, I was shocked that I really couldn't even find really anything that was cotton minus a tank top that I had that I had actually bought at the yoga studio. So that was a hundred percent cotton. And mm. then I, 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 I underwear basically was the only other option that I could wear as bottoms to do my hot yoga. So I, I literally had to completely reframe my, and first and foremost, my yoga practice gear, because that to me, I felt was probably the biggest impactor because the, what I'd learned in my research in terms of how things absorb from these plastic materials, um, like the materials Lycra. Um, I mean, there's so many different names, like Lycra, Styrene, polyamide, you know, and I, I truly believe that the same rule goes as it goes in our food label. I when you look at a food label. When you look at a food label, if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not food, don't eat it, likely not natural. Same thing hmm. for your clothing. Like polyamide, like what is that? That does not sound like anything natural. Elastane, like girl, like those, those are not natural words. So if it sounds like that, it's a, usually typically a good idea to stay away from it. Um, just be cautious of things like sateen, because sateen is, a, again, I think it's a bit of a word that sounds a bit greenwashed because it, sateen could very easily mimic silk. Uh, many, many women are using pillows that they're sleeping on that are made out of sateen when really what they're looking for is a silk pillow to help their hair. You see, mm -hmm. there's, there's all of these ways that the consumers confuse. It's just so, it's, it's just so shocking to me. So literally the reason my yoga clothing was my first place to go was because the environment where, uh, uh, plastics and chemicals transfer into the skin is number one, when there's heat and light. So obviously hot yoga is a hot activity. You could also consider that, you know, when you're in bed, because in bed, your temperature, even though your body temperature decreases, you could be sweating, especially as you age, hot flashes, night sweats, right? Those things you want to take into consideration. So heat and light impacts it. Uh, number two is microbiome increases absorption. So mm. obviously the skin contains a microbiome, much like our gut does. So there is an area where the materials that are on our skin are gonna be absorbing a lot easier. Number three is salt. So salt increases absorption of any of the plastics. So when you're sweating, again, that's gonna help with absorption. And number four, which is what brought me down this entire rabbit hole of changing my, <laughs> looking at labels in my clothing and starting to change the materials in my life, um, was that oils. Oils increase absorption of any tox toxins that may come into our system. So it's the same thing when we're, you know, one of the principles I, principles I learned early, early on in uh, my naturopathic medical career was that, you know, oils, lipophilic substances happen to absolutely love chemicals and toxins. In fact, most toxins are lipophilic, which means mm -hmm. they are fat loving. Right? So they travel and transfer in fat. So one of my earliest recommendations as a naturopathic doctor was olive oil for heart health. And I would always say, you know, if there's only one food that you can afford to do organic, let it be your oils, right? Because mm -hmm. your oil will, will hold the, the toxins and bring them into the body. So as they do within the digestion, you know, the skin is literally just an extension of what our mucosal digestive membrane is. It just happens to be on our outside where our mucosal membrane is on the inside. So the same factors apply. Again, that's heat and light, microbiome, salt, right? So possibly even having a high salt diet could increase your absorption of toxins. And then, and of course, on our skin, wherever we sweat, that's, that's an important factor. And then finally, the most importantly is oil. And so it makes me really proud that that conversation we had enlightened you in such a way that right away you took the insight to change what's right next to your body because it's being exposed mostly to your, the sebum, sebum products from your skin, right? That's an oily substance. 
lines right away. If there's sweating, of course, any of the creases, right? For women under the breasts, all the creases there in the inguinal canal, right? In between the, the pelvic region and your upper thigh, right? It's all creases and those are all areas that accumulate sweat, sebum glands, microbiome, and then of course, heat and light. So, you know, it's a perfect recipe for for us receiving a dose of something that we didn't invite into our lives, right? But now we can do better because we know better. I love that. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Point, points uh, well taken. And it, it makes a lot of sense when you think about it, right? So that's the beauty of, of going down this rabbit hole that uh, it's easy to see if you're willing to see it. And, That's you know, funny. scientifically, you know, chemically, it makes sense for us to make these uh, changes. But then what I'm finding is that these materials are actually far superior. So it's not, there's like actually no compromise. They're more comfortable. In fact, uh, this, this, is, this is a base layer top that I wear and I actually took on a challenge. I actually didn't tell you this, uh, but I did post about it on social media. So apparently you can wear merino wool, you know, 30 times or 30 days before actually needing to wash it. So I've worn this that. top. It's been about 20, it's almost been about 20 times now. And awesome. so I'm taking, I'm taking on the full, full on challenge and it has no odor and wow. I don't wear deodorant. There's no, there's no like body odor. Like you can't smell it at all. So it's really fascinating because I couldn't imagine doing that with any of my, you know, synthetic tops. Right. It's so, so yeah, no, because with your synthetic tops, immediately there's an odd smell. But I mean, that's the thing is we also know as practitioners that when there is, you know, body odor, it is usually a sign that there might be a little bit of issues with toxins and typically toxins mm -hmm. are plus. Yeah, right. Like we're always kind of having the same conversation. Now it's just extending out into our clothing. It's fascinating that you say that because I was just recently in a conversation with another practitioner and there's a study, which I need to get my hands on, which happens to uh, test out the, I, I believe it's the whether it's like kind of like the ORAC for supplements, but the, the ORAC value for materials. And apparently wool mm -hmm. is extremely high. So it doesn't surprise me even compared like wool would be the highest then it would be cotton. And then after that, like bamboo and all the other like artificial materials do um, do score quite, quite low. So it doesn't surprise me that a natural material and substance like that would just breathe and be natural and just function better with our body chemistry in, in general, right? Because it is a natural product. And, and that, that's the thing. It's a natural product because let's take bamboo as an example, right? Cause bamboo, I know so many of the listeners are going to, are going to be like thinking to themselves in their head. Oh, I'm pretty sure I just bought organic bamboo sheets at this and this such store or online, right? Because it's a, it's a mm -hmm. huge trend, now. organic bamboo clothing, organic bamboo, um, materials, sheets and it's because it's eco-sustainable but again i want to remind everyone eco-friendly doesn't necessarily mean super health friendly because bamboo bamboo you see is as strong in its natural state as steel and in construction it's used as a replacement for steel so you can imagine the tanks the textile strength right the tensile strength of the bamboo fibers now in order to make bamboo softer than cotton, because that's actually the claim of bamboo material, softer than cotton, you it's necessary to first of all, break down the fibers, the cellulose fibers of the bamboo in toxic chemicals. That's the only way to break them down, right? You've got to use hmm. toxic chemicals acids, different things that are then again, of course, washed off. But do they ever wash off of the material? Highly unlikely. There's always transfer. And then the major issue with bamboo is that most of the time, it's not just the cellulose bamboo fibers. Most of the time, like probably around 80 to 85% of the time, maybe even 90, it's bamboo bo a, a blended with like a rayon fiber, which is plastic or a polyester fly a plastic fiber or an elastane or I mean, any of the other names can be uh, woven within the bamboo materials. So that's where the problem lies is that not only do you have now the bamboo that's been treated with chemicals, the cellulose fiber, but now on top of that too, you also have it mixed and blended with a uh, plastic fiber. And then the way that they make, the reason and how they make plastic fibers soft like is they use phthalates because phthalates is the universal chemical which actually break like softens plastic it's what makes a water mm. bottle soft, is phthalates and you and i our conversation with regards to phthalates the minute like what does that think what do you think of right away when i say phthalates 
Well, I think of toxins, I think of cancer, I think of liver issues. Right. Estrogen disruption, we think of hormone disruption because satellites are the known hormonal disruptors. And hormone disruptors, I mean, just look, look at, look at the amount of hormonal conditions and thyroid conditions. Even now, I remember I'm, I'm now no longer currently in practice, but in the last year when I still was, the increase in the amount of male Hashimoto's thyroid disease was surprising to me, including even mm. my husband being diagnosed with it over the past year, which was, was shocking to me. Right. But, but I mean, we're living in this environment. We can't always totally be away and not exposed from it, but the more and more phthalates that we have in our environment and the more and more materials that we are using that are, are plastic and are exposed to phthalates, well, the more and more we're absorbing those. And here's what I find interesting as society has changed because Initially, these plastic fibers were made during the war and they had, they served a real purpose. So, and I, and I also want to highlight too, that many companies don't know that they may be uh, creating harm or, 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 or using materials that may not be in the best interest. You know, many of us don't have the knowledge and that's just where it begins. But hopefully if we can create this conversation and start to become more socially responsible about it. These, many of the companies will change. And I have true faith in that. So I do want to just prephase all this because Initially, the DuPont um, plastic company created plastic materials in order to protect all of our soldiers in the, in the, in, in, when they were in the bunks, right? Because it was wet, it was moldy, they were sleeping there. There was a potential for them to be at danger for their life if they have open wounds. So these plastic materials were made in order to preserve life. Hmm. Then fast forward historically, where we actually see more use of plastic material and fibers is actually in women in, with polyester dresses in the 19 and 30s and 40s and 50s and moving forward. Men typically actually dressed more often still in cotton. So they were very lucky and wool because it was cotton shirts and it was cotton pants and, then, and, and, and khaki pants, right, which were pretty much cotton corduroy mm -hmm. pants. Think of the different eras and the different times of your lives. And then jeans, which are also typically 100% cotton. So that we haven't been completely, you know, corrupted with our materials totally. There's our elements of hope and there are wonderful things that we do have within our clothing. But it's interesting to note just that women seem to have been exposed a lot longer and women's health seems to have been impacted a lot more than seeking out not, not that they're the only ones dealing with health problems, but just seeking out health, health issues and health problems. And the conversation has started a lot earlier with women with regards to conditions like autoimmunity and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, right? So it's, it's just interesting to note, uh, can I conclude specifically that women are more impacted by this? No, I cannot. But I just find that it's interesting how the conversation has changed. And truly now, men, I feel, are becoming more and more exposed because it has become the active era within the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. And with companies like Lululemon and different other, other brands who are doing sportive, active gear that is meant to breathe more. But does it really breathe? Does it really, as you said, breathe better than cotton? Do those materials that are, you know, sweat less, do they really breathe better or are they just, you know, mobilizing or we're, we're actually mobilizing things within our body rather than it coming out of our system as it should when we sweat. Right. So it's, it's just a mm -hmm. super, super interesting conversation and just interesting to be aware of the history of how these materials evolved and how, you know, I don't, it's not done with a poor intention. I think we just don't know. We just aren't aware. And you can see that also too, because there's very, very little science that when we speak about things like phthalates and when we speak about, um, you know, hormone disruptors, they often speak about in our air, in our food, in our water, but it's few and far between a study that will, will speak about clothing and the materials of our lives, few and far between Sachin. So what does that tell you? Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is, it is, it's interesting how much of our life is petroleum based, right? Even many, many times, you know, fertilizers are petroleum based, as we know, clothing can be petroleum based. Uh, you know, the fuel that runs the world is petroleum and it just, it's infiltrating our lives in, in so many different ways that we don't realize that these, this problem didn't exist or this, you know, invitation uh, for these things never existed in our lives. And we're seeing the consequences of that. I think in so many different ways, and, and this could be a, for a lot of people, something, uh, you know, it, it's, this reminds me of every patient that says they've tried everything. 
Yes. And and yes. then see they changed everything in their life except what they were wearing, right? Yeah. Um, or it just was right under their noses uh, the whole time. And I can I can see myself going back in time, almost like doing a timeline therapy for myself, like just wishing I had known this to say it and mention it to people that I'd worked with over all these years, because, you know, who knows how it's impacting them, right? And when you think about how much time we spend in bed, right, a third of our lives, if we're lucky, we spend in bed. And, you know, we're using, you know, you know, let's say bamboo, I, I'm guilty of having bought bamboo sheets, right? I was sold and they were, or, they were organic, right? They're hundred percent organic. And, you know, I got sold because I didn't know yeah. any better. And yeah. what I'm learning now is that linen is actually a very superior material, uh, you know, for healing, like, you know, they call it a linen closet, but then how much linen is in people's linen closets these days, how much, yeah. uh, linen is on their bed. Right. And, and linen is great because it has no static. So it electrically, you know, balances our bodies as well. So, you know, as I'm, as I'm learning all this, I'm like, wow, it, it's actually, it, it makes sense. It's, it's, uh, something that is relatively easy to change. Right. Uh, it does take maybe baby steps for some people, but, uh, it's super important. And, you know, as we're, as we're talking about the components that we need to consider, like our salt, our sweat, you know, light exposure, all those things, you know, these toxins that are then bioaccumulating in our body, that's where some of your amazing talents and, uh, journey has led you to in creating, uh, you know, really an, a natural ancient, uh, remedy that you've brought, uh, you know, you know, to as many people as, as you possibly can and continue to, uh, which is castor oil. So I, I'd love to talk about how, um, you know, this journey has led you down, you know, helping people detoxify and learn more about, you know, how to work with their body in synergy with nature to help promote healthy detoxification and so many other functions. Awesome. It, it comes down to the, to what you were talking about just a moment ago about saying about how much of our lives is permeated with plastics and petroleum based products. Because one of the first lessons I learned in homotoxicology, which is the study of toxins within the human system, which was my area of, of specialization where I learned in um, Germany um, from German doctors. And the, the very first thing that I learned and then later on repeated and repeated in my environmental um, certification and all the work that I did in this area was it's all in the dose, right? And that's even an ancient, ancient phrase from one of the philosophers back in the day in Greece. It's all in the dose. The poison is in the dose. And mm. be, here's the thing is that we in our world, and I don't want anyone to feel bad if they have bought organic cotton sheets, because here's the thing in our world, we can't completely prevent exposure. It's an, an impossibility. But what we can do is we can take measures, we can take steps and we can do practices that help to optimize our body's ability to reduce the dose. So number one with clothing that starts with look at the labels, right? And that's what I started to do. Look at the labels. So now I'm starting to reduce my dose, but I'm still definitely in, in so many different other areas and aspects of my life. And so is everyone else exposed, right? In the air, in the food, etc. So one of my favorite practices was the castor oil pack that I happened to stumble upon after about a decade of being told to do it but for my own health, but <laughs> being completely, uh, I guess, again, ignorant, not wanting to wake up and be aware as to this treatment, thinking that it was woo woo. It was weird what, what it was being promoted as because what the castor oil pack was, was said to be something to help with liver detox, lymphatic drainage and colon cleansing. And to me, those three things, I was like, this is fantastic. And it would help to sleep better, to poop better and to feel better hormonal. So have better moods, less, less headaches, less acne, less problems with the skin overall, just basically, you know, the body waking up, feeling better. So I, I was intrigued by, you know, what it proposed to do, but then I'm looking at it. Number one, it was a mess before it was, you know, take a, a cotton flannel, saturate it with oil, um, you know, put it on your body, wrap plastic wrap around you, which to me right away, I was like, how can they be recommending a, a detoxification therapy and then wrapping the body around with plastic, right? So right there, mm. I think probably the first seed of thought to me that things that are around our body shouldn't be plastic, but I didn't realize our clothing was. <laughs> so that was, the first, <laughs> that was the first thing where I was like, mm, I don't think I want to do that castor oil pack. It just seems so weird. Like, why would you do detox therapy? That's like that. So then, so then, you know, but 
fast forward years later, 10 years later, I'm now in naturopathic college because I went to school because I still wasn't getting solutions for my own personal health challenges, which was, you know, heavy duty IBS, constipation, alternating with, with um, a diarrhea. I was constantly dealing with anxiety. By the time I got to school, I was exposed to mold, black mold, and then Epstein-Barr virus. So I was getting multiple chronic infections. Just the load on my body was too much, right? And my system mm -hmm. was able to nourish itself properly and, and therefore balance itself out. So I was really, really looking for a solution and is why I went back to school. But the stress was too much, as it is in professional colleges. I'm sure our colleagues listening will all understand this. And I, I was unable in my fourth final clinical year to get out of bed. And it was mm -hmm. completely same. So now I was on top of anxiety and everything else. Now I was completely depressed because I I knew it was my mission to become a naturopathic doctor and, and to do something with this. So I, and the biggest reason too, I was so depressed was because I was doing everything. I was, or so I thought, as you said, <laughs> I was taking all the right supplements. I was, you know, doing all the right exercises. I was, you know, seeing all the right doctors, getting the colon hydrotherapies, doing the enemas. But what I really did not have in control was, uh, or even in balance, I don't want to say control because you can't ever control it, is, is stress. And stress was really the overwhelming factor for me that was has, has up until now been a challenge that I, I just did not have the tools in order to balance it out. And so then when I was in bed, able to, unable to get out, it clicked into my head. The one thing I haven't tried is that castor oil pack that I thought was woo-woo. And so, you know, I said, that's it. I'm going to do it. But I, I just didn't want to do it the other way. So I sewed up my very own first little castor oil pack and I put it <laughs> on my body. Yeah, it was great. It didn't have plastic. I, I was just completely like organic cotton bag from a trade show and an orga organic cotton, uh, you know, a hand towel. And I sewed it and I put it on place on my body. And I immediately found the felt benefit. I felt calm. I felt relaxed. I felt wonderful. And then that took me down a road of, of trying to figure out, like, what is this thing actually doing in my body? How is this helping me deep liver detox, lymphatic drain, and, and colon cleanse? And, you know, I thought it was the castor oil, as many people do. But in reality, the castor oil only has one small aspect, which is, you know, to signal the neurological system to shift into the vagal nerve. Um, to, you know, feel good hormones like dopamine. It definitely has anti-inflammatory activities, definitely is a wonderful, uh, rich in antioxidants like glutathione and nitric oxide. It balances microbiome. So it's all these wonderful benefits, right? The castor oil. But it was actually the castor oil pack. It was actually the material, the flannel, that when placed on my body would work through my nervous system on physiological dermatomes, I'm getting big into the science here, which are basically, you know, nerve endings that link into organs inside of the body. You know, you as a chiropractor, you're very familiar with dermatomes. So one of the, that's how you work, right? Mm -hmm. We work, I work it with it for with castor oil packs, because what I'm doing with my castor oil packs is working the dermatomes and and creating messages internally to the vagal nerve, as well as to somatic organs that are visceral organs, like your liver, like your intestine, like the pancreas, like the stomach, like the gallbladder. So the literal usage of these castor oil packs, the castor oil on the skin would signal the release of, of gallbladder and the dump of the bile, right? Because again, as I said earlier on, the skin is just an extension of what the digestion does. In digestion, when you eat oil, you dump bile. Well, the signal to begin liver detox, colon cleansing, lymphatic drainage is the dumping of the bile. It's so cool. I love, I love the physiology, mm -hmm. right? So when you place the oil on the skin, it does that. So it begins the process. And even greater, more still and more importantly, the, 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 the warm hug of the castor oil pack flannel, the actual flannel is like a warm hug and elicits the same response. It elicits the same response that a Band-Aid would elicit, which is a, a, a natural release of oxytocin, right? The love and the cuddle hormone. And oxytocin balances out cortisol. So once you balance out cortisol, you open up the body's ability to be able to naturally it's not the pack miraculously lever detoxing, lymphatic draining, and colon cleansing. It's the pack facilitating and opening up the body, moving it into the state that it needs to be in, in order for it to do its most important job, which is keep the temple clean.
So it, it just, and this, this treatment changed my life, right? Much like the conversation we had about material changed your life and put you on a different, different, different road. Well, this castor oil pack changed my life. And I remember running back to clinical practice and trying to get every single patient on the pack. <laughs> and well, it was the exact same response reaction that I had then like me, number one, thought it was woo woo. And then, but with a little convincing, I was able to share with them why it wasn't woo woo. But number two, and probably even more important, it was too complicated and it wasn't easy to do. And so they needed a way to do it that was easy and that was healthy so that they, would, they wouldn't use an old rag. Because if you look on the internet, like, you know, Healthline will say how to do a do it yourself castor oil pack and they say to use an old rag. Well, if we're using an old rag, number one, who knows the material, but who knows what old, old rag, what you did with that old rag? What if you used chemicals to clean things, right? So, you know, I was really concerned that my patients wouldn't be able to do the right things and, and have the right materials at their disposal. So then what I did was I created my very first castor oil pack. And at that very first castor oil pack was 100% organic cotton. But again, the one thing here, and this is what I say, and this is why when you take things in balance is I, I later on recreated the pack because of the consumer complaints, because the consumer complaints, because the pack was hundred percent organic cotton was that the oil would transfer through. So I needed to get a mm. workaround, right? And that was the big reason why the original recommendation was to use a plastic wrap, right? So I did a workaround. I figured out the science on how I could do it and how I could figure out a, the layer that are touching the skin, the most important part that is right next to your skin, for that to be organic cotton flannel. And then the outside layer to be not chemically bonded, but heat bonded, so there's less of an impact. And heat also can dissipate phthalates, which is what I loved about that as aspect as well, too. So I found the most, the, the best scientifically designed, least amount of impact that I could find, right, so that we could live in our modern world and do an ancient therapy and do it easily because ultimately that's it. We can't get rid of all of the toxins in our world or all the materials, the toxins within our materials, but we can definitely make different and better choices. So I, and now I have coming up in the next little months, an even greater still option. So like an insert that we can keep on recycling and moving out. And so then that way it helps people to do it better. And if they do want a completely organic pack, because some people are aware like you and I, and do just want to now buy the hundred percent, well, then they can do that as well too. And we'll have an option for that because, and I'm very happy to meet people where they're at. Right. And that's the thing is that for me, when I explored these castor oil packs, they did, they, they literally changed my life. And that first time I put the pack on, it was like the sky opened up and the angels began to skip the sing for me. It was, it was biblical that moment. And I, I just, I would love for everyone in the world to feel that way as well too, and do it at where they're ready, where they're at, at what point they're at in their journey, right? Some are purists and wanted to be a hundred percent fantastic. Some want it midway and just want to be maintaining and continuously working their liver detox, their lymphatic drainage and colon cleansing. And that works too. So start where where you're at and then evolve from there. So yeah, so I literally started working with these castor oil packs and then, and then, well, then, then we have more stories. So I can tell you then why this bamboo idea came <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, let's, um, let's break it down. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah, let's recap what you just talked about. So, uh, one castor oil, when all else seemed to have not failed, but when all else wasn't doing the trick, that was one thing that really helped create a huge shift in your health. Um, is Are there any contraindications to castor oil and what is the frequency um, that somebody should be doing the castor oil packs? I'd love for you to answer that for me. Awesome question. Just think like, things like a doctor. I love it. So the, the only contraindication with castor oil packs is truly pregnancy. And the reason for that is because castor oil is known to move smooth muscle. So it does activate via nitric oxide and also via prostaglandins, um, the smooth muscle of the intestine, but also the uterus. And that's the reason during pregnancy, we don't want to be using a castor oil pack. As a little side note, the smooth muscle is also in the blood vessels and the lymphatic system. And that's potentially one of the mechanisms of action, actions of how the castor oil and the castor oil pack works is through the blood vessels and through the lymphatic system. Now, frequency of usage, I mean, I would love to see every person in the world doing a castor oil pack 
every single night overnight. That would be the dream. That would be my dream. So every single night practice overnight while you sleep. Now, most that's not realistic for everybody. So at bare minimum, we're looking for to, to use it for at least one hour in the evening, right? So just at least one hour. And in the evening, the reason for in the evening is because of our body's natural way that we detox, cleanse, and drain. We typically detox, drain, and cleanse while we sleep. So that's why it's important to, to work with the body and it's, it's genius. And you can see that very, very clearly in the traditional Chinese medicine clock. You can see that in the Ayurvedic, the, the times and activities of the doshas and the organs in terms of Ayurvedic medicine as well too. And now, you know, in PubMed, we're seeing research in terms of chronobiology supporting the fact that our body cleanses and detoxes and drains much better while we sleep. So that's number one, which is excellent. Now, you know, I say that every night, knowing that most patients and even myself, I'm, I'm not perfect, uh, will aim to do it like three to five times per week. And that's good too. Something is better than nothing when it comes to castor oil pots, but obviously more frequently is better. So just remember that something is better than nothing, but more frequently is better. And in certain cases of conditions where, where patients are convalescing or unable to get out of bed or really, really in severe illness, I mean, my first month of doing a castor oil pack, I was doing them every two hours. So I would wear it for one hour and then take it off for another hour, wear it for an hour, take it off for another hour. And the reason being was that I realized the entire activity of the castor oil pack was parasympathetic modulation. Like not the entire, but a major part of the activity is parasympathetic modulation. And that being a huge weakness in my body's ability to balance and be healthy. So I, like an Olympic athlete needs to practice, I needed to practice moving my body into the relaxed state. So that's, that was the commitment that I made for myself. And it really did, uh, do wonders because, you know, typically people when diagnosed with chronic fatigue or Epstein-Barr or, or multiple, you know, co-infections, you know, they're get wetter, they, they never get better since, you know, since they get their infection, they're always feeling draggy, uncomfortable, not well, or it could take years and years and years. But I was able to recuperate my energy state better than before the infection within three months, just with that active protocol. So that's a really good um, hack for practitioners working with patients um, to, to in terms of prescription, the patch is more frequent initially, especially the more severe the patient may be. The, the other thing though, I wanna highlight because frequency is good, more frequent is better, but less oil is better. So this is really important. We, the original recommendations was to oversaturate the cotton flannel, but that's not necessary. Um, again, I believe that the knowledge with regards to how the pack and how the castor oil actually worked wasn't really there back in the early 1900s. And in the 1960s and 70s, as the, you know, the health food store trends started to pick up and people started getting back into castor oil packs. So, and I think our philosophy as, as human beings has been for many, many years, you know, more is better. But that's not always the case. And with castor oil, less is better. So you you do less castor oil. So really with the castor oil pack, like say our pack, like the Queen of the Thrones pack, all you really need is one tablespoon of treatment. That's it. One tablespoon. And that takes things much further. We even dropped it over the years of practice. We used to initially recommend two to four tablespoons. And over the years of practice with people and, and feedback and testimonials, we started realizing that we, you know, to get the exact same effect, we need less and less. So one taste taste tablespoon now is where we settled on. And we're really happy about that because that also saves, um, well, saves the usage of the product, saves money for people as well too. So that's, that's a big bonus. Now, so those are the keys, I believe, with the castor oil pack to remember is not to be used in pregnancy. Uh, more frequently is better, especially the more sicker that you are. Otherwise, nightly before bed and overnight is better than at least one hour and one tablespoon of oil each and every time that you use the pack. These packs also, like I'll show a pack here, these packs also they do need to be replaced. Again, like anything, we're, uns we're unsure of exactly what happens with the castor oil transfer. Does it just go transfer into the body or is it possibly that it might transfer out of the body as well too and carry something within it? That's the reason why it's recommended to reapply oil each and every time. And it's also the reason that we recommend to dispose of the pack after two months. It also gets highly, highly saturated with oil. So then there'll be a point in time where people will be, okay, it's ready to go. <laughs> like any, <laughs> right? <laughs>
Now, we, we've spoken about the materials of the, the actual pack itself. Uh, tell us more about what's in the actual oil as, as well, or what's not in the oil, because there's a key distinction in, in the Queen of the Throne, um, you know, packs and oils that you've created. So tell me, tell us more about that. Now, our, our oil is 100% organic, and that's really, really important when it comes to the oil because castor oil, here's the thing with castor oil, it is the queen of carrier oils. It is the very best of all carrier oils, and this is because of its molecular weight. The ricinoleic acid molecule of castor oil, which makes it unique, castor oil is a mix of ricinoleic, it's about 90%, but then there's also oleic, which is basically an omega-9 like that of all oil, and then linoleic, which is an omega-6, very uh, similar to sesame oil, right? So those are the oils that are contained, the, the uh, triglyceride chains. Now, the ricinoleic acid, its molecular weight is under 500 Daltons, which in dermatological medicine makes it able to permeate through the epidermis into the dermis. Now, you know, popular to con people may think that the castor oil permeates all the way through deep and then like embraces and hugs the liver. Mm, I don't know if I buy that. Like that, that what doesn't make sense. Like when I look at the physiology and, and how the oil works, my my what I suspect is that how castor oil is working is that it is it is transferring through the epidermis deep into the dermis, but it, within the dermis, the blood circulation and the blood vessels as well as lymphatic vessels. So I do believe that the castor oil is then carried to the liver and carried to the intestines and carried to the organs through the blood vessels. And then it's also helping the lymphatic system to carry and move toxins, but also improving the smooth muscle movement of the blood vessels and the lymphatics. So that's that's a really neat mechanism of action just to, to make a distinction there. But the, that's, and that's a big reason why you want it to be organic because it's going inside of your body and it's a detox treatment because if it's going inside of the blood vessels and lymphatic system you don't want it to be carried in plastic because if it's carried in plastic well then that plastic is going to be absorbing into your body as well too and how will it be able to do its job of detoxing you it won't it, it'll probably likely just retox you or intox you right it'll, it'll create mm. more toxic load system. So our castor oil is 100% organic. It is also extra virgin of uh, first cold pressed because, well, the cold, like your, like your olive oil, one of my favorite prescriptions back in the day still is, I love olive oil. Olive oil needs to be uh, extra virgin in order to have the most amount of nutrients and antioxidants. And castor oil is rich in antioxidants, polyphenols like quercetin. And what I love about quercetin, it was always a, a, a continuous a prescription in my practice to aid in absorption because quercetin aids in everything that you do to absorb better. And, and we know that castor oil packs support better absorption. And that's likely due to the ca high quality castor oil that is cold pressed. So not damaged by any heat and not done with any chemicals. And then of course, extra virgin. So that's the quality of the castor oil you're looking for, because that's what's going to help to really get the overall, uh, not just a one magic bullet fix that that people may think castor oil packs are or castor oil, but castor oil packs are truly like an all inclusive treatment for the body or supportive practice for the body, right? That looks at antioxidant states, cleansing and detoxification states, nervous system regulation states, inflammatory states, immune states. I mean, it's looking at it all, ab absorbability. And, and that's why to me, you know, castor oil packs are such a foundation in my clinical practice and in my health care practice for myself, my self care rhythm. Mm. The, the earth is uh, bountiful with its gifts. And I'm so grateful that you found this one. And it's, you know, uh, it's, it's actually a remedy in our home as well. But it's used in more, you know, uh, acute states. I love that this is something that we can use on a, on a regular basis to encourage our health to encourage anything that moves us into a parasympathetic state is you know, helping us heal every organ, cell, tissue, and system in our body simultaneously. And it's the, um, if it can be this simple, which clearly it is, and people can get great results with it, um, then, then so be it. So thank you for all the amazing work that you're doing. Um, we're, we're going to share some links, but I'd love to know how people can get a hold of you. How can they learn uh, some more about the work that you're doing and, and connect with you as well? 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, you can connect with me on Instagram at be well queen. So that's my Instagram handle. You can also go see my company handle at queen of the thrones. And then of course you've got the links that'll be uh, posted there. And if I could just uh, share with people the importance of just looking at labels, just, I really do hope that everyone takes from this conversation, the intention to now begin to look at labels and understand marketing and the words that are being used and what we're being told. And I speak a lot about this on my Instagram accounts. I want to encourage people, if you're concerned or, or, or thinking about what are the next steps, come see me on at Be Well Queen because there, this is, this is a conversation that I'm having is all about labels when it comes to clothing, uh, the materials that we're using, what we're doing with our materials. And, and then even when it comes to castor oil packs, because, you know, not there's, since I've been speaking so much about these castor oil packs, of course, now there are new people out on the marketplace who may not have the knowledge about the materials and such. So I just do want everyone to be very, very aware because this is a health practice. So always, always look at labels, not only on your food, but also on your clothing and for your self-care care practices as well, too. So thank you so much, Sachin, for having me. It's been a real pleasure to connect. Thank you. Thank you so much. And here's to continued health, happiness, and wholeness to you, Marisol, and to all of our listeners. Have a wonderful day. Awesome, Sachin. Thanks. (laughs) Bye.